folks. Well, tonight we're going to do an equipment autopsy or at least inspection on this American-made Lennox. Uh, it's also got the air handler with it for an indoor multi or split system, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, it's all there. Got a TX valve. Uh, even got the original owner's manual. The main reason it's in such good condition is because it was down here, still sealed inside its original plastic bag. And, uh, yeah, that's not good for airflow. If you find one of these which has the owner's manual tucked in here, pull it out. It's not very good. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's all there. A lot of warnings, too. I notice there's a lot more warnings in these than there is in, say, the Chinese, or the Japanese and Chinese mini splits. It's got warning about running the compressor to pull a vacuum. Um, the fiberglass wool inside the indoor unit. Health hazard. Um... Maybe somebody's even used oxygen in one because it says do not use oxygen in them because it can explode on contact with oil. So, yeah, it's got all the data, service bell descriptions and things. It's an Elite Sit Model 11, uh, made in 2001-2002. This actual document was printed in 2001, so it's from anywhere there onwards. Uh, still got the owner's manual. I didn't get the thermostat with it, which is a bit of a shame. But a standard Honeywell thermostat would do just fine. It's got charging and or pressure. Prep, it's got a PC chart in it essentially, pressure temperature chart, crankcase heaters, troubleshooting about say frozen fan bearings and valve stem caps and other stuff like that. Normal operating pressure table chart. Really good. Even a start up and performance checklist. So that can stay with it if this thing turns out to be good. And that's the first thing we're going to do is check the compressor. I know this thing doesn't have refrigerant in it, or at least maybe a couple of PSI, so it may have leaked. I found when I cracked one of the valves there's maybe two or three PSI and it smelt kind of funky. Actually it smelt quite strong, so it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't recommend intentionally smelling it, but I didn't actually intentionally smell it, it's just when it's that kind of smell, you just notice it. It's like car LPG. You get a tiny leak, and it's not like you want to smell it, but you smell it. So who knows? Maybe uh, an American refrigerant has a, a notice, uh, I suppose you call it a tagant, a chemical tracer in it. And again, lots of warnings. It's a the actual unit's a model number HS29-036S-3T, serial number 5803D, 38456 normally contains 2.07 kilos of R22 and the indoor unit is a uh, CH23-51 maximum design pressure 450 psi it's fairly high but not that it'd run that high uh, it's only got a TX valve on it so I think this thing's only cool only yeah, fiberglass it's not that dangerous. I mean, most Australian products with this shit in it don't have warnings on them, but America seems to be the central hub of warning stickers and things that are known to cause cancer. Seems everything in California is known to cause cancer. Okay, this thing looks pretty good. Compressor ohmed up just fine. Fan motor ohmed up fine. Nothing's, nothing's going to ground. I kind of feel like Dr. Zarklov or... Uh, Fritz HVAC working on this unit because I've never ever seen one in Australia before. I know they're around and I might have seen one or two round ones on rooftops but I've never actually seen one in scrap or actually worked on one like this. It's all American stuff. This thing's full of compost. That's the only problem with updraft fans is the unit. If it's anywhere near trees or foliage it just ends up inside. It's got the uh, special plug pack for the compressor. Compressor was fine, even with the wires on and off. Um, yeah, I've got to vacuum out all that compost with the wet dry vac and give it a good clean. Very thin. It's only a single layer coil. It's not a twin layer. And it's cooling only as well. No, no reversing valve. Uh, there's two cutouts there, high or low, I think. Oh no, there's no low pressure. It's only on high pressure side. So if it does have a leak, it might have run for a while without pressure but I don't know being cooling only they might have just ripped it out because it wasn't the heat pump 
that's a big thing in Australia. Everyone likes these mini splits, like this one, because they're heat pumps. And this one's probably rated to the same, if not more, power. This is an 8 kilowatt heat pump. So, this unit probably outperforms this American one. But then again, that has a much bigger air handler. So, I don't know. They're probably very close in size, and personally I prefer working on that one apart from the digital electronics. You don't have to lean down inside to get the compressor out. But no, it looks like a well-made unit. I hope it doesn't have a leak, and that's where a bit of testing will come into it. Since it doesn't have, doesn't have any measurable amount of refrigerant in it, I might as well seal these pipes up with some solder, open the valves and just pump nitrogen into it, or evacuate it first, then pump nitrogen into it, and just do a leak-down test to see if it leaks. Because if it does, then we've got a problem. It's funny that it didn't have any refrigerant in it. The place I got it from doesn't normally recover units. So, usually when I find one without gas, it's because it's been damaged or leaked. And that's the fan there. It's got a... Is it a... Oh, what brand is that motor? Emerson. Your old Emerson. Still free. And it's got a tracking number on it. But something or other 03 first. Okay, it's a 2003 model. It's not old at all. It's really not old at all. Okay, this is the part you've been waiting for. Let's see if the old dog runs. Uh, always use an insulated screwdriver to push the magic button. Uh, particularly on these contactors. The funny thing about American stuff, they're covered with warning labels, like that grounding label and all the ones on the front panel on the owner's manual but they've got the most dangerous looking contactors and these wire nuts which aren't even approved in Australia. This is a normal contactor for example, like what I'm used to. Covered in plastic and you've got the magic button there which you can push with your bare finger. That one there I'm not going anywhere near. Cause that, even though it's on the neutral wire, it's still hot with respect to earth. So you don't touch that. But that's a regular one like what we're used to over here in the locally made mini splits and other industrial equipment. But, yeah, let's see what happens. Ooh, sounds angry. It's not starting. Wait. Oh, that's the fan. I haven't plugged the fan back in, but the compressor's still not starting. Hello, Mr. Runcap. I think you're faulty. Let's try the fan. Disconnect first, though. Plug the fan back in. Okay, now the fan's hot. Oh yeah, that run cap's fried. Just vibrating, it's going out of frequency. It's trying to start, it's spinning. Yeah, buggered run cap. Alright, we've got run caps. No run cap bandit here, they both fit perfectly. Just the way they should be, two separate caps, not one big one. Uh, it's all wired up. I really hope this new modern compressor has a clicks in it so that it saved it somewhat. But refrigerant still smelt funky, so there might be some damage to it. Let's see how we go. That's better. Running. It'll run. <laughs> vacuum on the suction side, so we don't want to go too far. Hmm. Interesting. We'll work on this one at a later date. I'll just stick it out the back. Indoor coil and uh, condensing unit need to be hooked up properly. Uh, I need a good purge and clean refrigerant. Not obvious that this is blown, but you can see the end's ever so slightly blown out. It's dead. Oh, that'll do for this one. I can clean it up, wrap it up, and store it for now. Thanks for watching.